Good morning, everyone. Leah Dixon here from Port Coquitlam, British Columbia. I am going live for, I believe it's day six of my summer celebration series. And today I'm going to be featuring the Rings of Love designer series paper. Um, now I'm going to switch over to my desktop. I'm going to show you the catalog page that shows that. And then I'm also going to show you the actual designer series paper before we start crafting this morning. So thanks so much for joining me and let's switch over. Oh, hi, Gail. All right. So what I'm featuring today is the Rings of Love Designer Series paper. It's featured here in our um, celebration brochure and you actually get it free with any $60 purchase. Now, what's cool about this paper is it does completely coordinate with the ringed with nature stamp set that I was using yesterday or no, maybe not yesterday, maybe a few days ago. And they have some beautiful samples in here pairing that paper with that stamp set. Um, so because they've already featured that, I thought I'd pair it up with something a little bit different. And instead, I have put it with the cup of tea bundle. And so we're going to use this beautiful stamp set. And the cool thing about this is if you do not already own this bundle, this bundle, the stamp set and dies, is $62, which means voila, you've earned the paper for free just by grabbing this bundle. So kind of nice. All right, and that's page 13 of our annual catalog for that bundle. Um, so I'm gonna show you guys the paper. It is so pretty and the catalog image is so tiny, it does not do it justice. Um, so we've got some beautiful plaid and this is Poppy Parade, um, Blushing Bride and Mint Macaron. And then the other side of that paper is this beautiful floral and we kind of have like all the seasons in here. To me, this is very summery. Um, and then we move into some more kind of like autumn and acorns and leaves. I think my paper's sideways, you guys. Let's turn it for you. There we go. So we've got some acorns. And then the back side of that is our beautiful springtime blooms. And so just like bright daffodil, or I think it's crushed curry, um, parakeet party, and blushing bride. So some really bright, fun colors in there. Then we move more into autumn. Could be still summer though, with those cute little birdies. And oh, this gorgeous paper. I'm thinking I'm going to use this one actually with my um, snowflakes and with my kayak because I can see both water and like frost in this page. So it's just so, so pretty. Um, and then let's see, moving on. Great little one for another house card like I made the other day. Um, I've seen people like actually cutting, like fussy cutting these houses out because it's pretty straight lines, easy fussy cut and doing that or just creating it as a background, like welcome to the community, that kind of thing. And then these beautiful, beautiful blooms. And again, I've seen people come in and fussy cut either the whole thing or come in and do a smaller mandala and uh, mandala and um, just, yeah, really beautiful accents or using it as a background. So again, really, really pretty stuff. I am such a sucker for anything with mushrooms on it. I don't even know why, because I don't even like eat mushrooms or anything, but they're just so cute. And, you know, pairing this up with that cute little gnome stamp set we've got would be adorable. And then this is awesome because I showed you guys the Ringed with Nature embossing folder, the hybrid one with the die and everything. Well, the die actually lays on here and cuts these out. So then you don't even have to do any coloring or shading. You've got these perfect little log rounds already die cut. And then finally, moving right into Christmas if you want with the poinsettia. I think it's a poinsettia. And the other side of it, the barren trees what a beautiful background especially if you get that stamp set with the bird that has the die cut as well but you could change it up and put these trees in the background so like really really unbelievably beautiful papers in this that just are not not shown off well in that tiny picture that they have all right um, so I'm gonna pop those back into their sleeve and we're going to get started creating now that you've seen um seen what we're going to be using so let me grab all my bits 
And we actually have a decision to make because I can't decide if on our finished card, I want to have a mint macaron background. It kind of blends in though with that plaid or if we want to go ahead and use the Orchid Oasis that kind of has a bit more of a pop to it. Um, so a little bit of a decision you guys can make for me as we go along. So you guys will see what we've got going on for stamping. I'm going to put all those pieces off to the side right now, though, and we're going to do the actual stamping because I've got a cool technique to share with you today. So first thing we're going to do is grab hmm, our Mint Macaron ink. And what I have here is a piece of basic white cardstock, and I used the fourth smallest um, stitched rectangle. So I've got all my stitched rectangles, and I actually used the fourth smallest one um, that's missing. That's over at my cut and cut and emboss machine still. So I use that one to die cut a stitched rectangle. Now, if you don't have a die cut machine, you don't have stitched rectangles. Don't worry about it. You can just cut. A, um, a rectangle and this one is at three and seven eighths by two and five eighths um, is kind of the size that gets cut out by this stitched rectangle. Um, so I did use the stitched rectangle though and right about halfway point on here I am going to stamp this little bit of greenery from our teacups. Oh no I hope I didn't stamp that too high. I should have done my thank you first. Oh no, it'll still fit. Good. Oh, actually it won't. Darn it. Okay. Um, let's see. I am, I think I might have to go cut a second one because that is not going to fit. Okay. So I thought I was saving time by pre-cutting that piece and then I went and messed it up. So I'm just going to go grab my dies and cut one more. Sorry, you guys. So I am back. Here we go. So I cut a new stitched rectangle. Now these guys can be a little bit tricky. I do know some people put a layer of wax paper down before they put the die down and that way the paper doesn't stick so much into these little creases. There we go. All right. So I've got that cut. Now let's start this one the way I probably should have, which is to stamp my thank you first. All right. So I'm doing a lot of stamping off on this card. So I've got Knight of Navy ink, but I'm going to stamp it off and then stamp my thank you up in that top corner. All nice and soft. Okay, I'm trying to avoid that harshness of like the dark Knight of Navy and stuff. All right, now with that stamped, Mint Macaron is light enough. I'm going to stamp it full strength and down quite a bit lower. Um, let me see. Are those flowers going to fall? Okay, that should work. So, just like that. So it's just a little bit lower than halfway. And I kind of put that one point there because I'm going to have a little flower down here and below. All right, so now we're going to stamp those flowers. And what I think is so cool is those flowers are actually one stamp and they're already positioned for you. So you just need to ink them up and stamp them. So I'm going to use some Poppy Parade, which again is a really dark color, you guys. So I'm going to ink it up and then I'm going to stamp it off before I come in here and stamp my card. There we go. All right. So I've got those nice muted flowers in the background now because I went and did that stamped off look. All right. And now we are going to stamp our teacup, but we're not going to stamp it onto that piece of white. I've actually got a piece of shimmery cardstock. So I used this the other day for watercoloring those blooms. Um, 
from the hues of happiness or happiness abound set. So I've got the same kind of paper again, shimmery white cardstock, and I'm going to pull out my Knight of Navy ink, my little teacup, and this is the one that has the leaves on it, and I'm going to stamp off, and then I'm going to stamp that teacup onto my shimmery white. And I'm pretty sure this piece is just like two and a quarter or two and a half inches square. I can double check that for you. Let's see. Yeah, I just did two and a half inches square. And so that's the perfect size to stamp this teacup. Now to color this in, I'm actually going to bring in a kind of faux watercoloring tool that I've got here. These are called blender pens. You get three of them in a pack. And you know what, to be honest, I'm not really sure what's in them, but it's some kind of liquid. And I always just make sure my brush is clean, even though the tip is a little dark. I want to make sure that it's running clear. And it's a clear ink that you can use to lift up other inks. But what's super cool about this is that I don't have to lift up ink from like an ink palette. I can lift up the ink that's right here on my page from stamping my teacup, even though I stamped it off. It's still enough ink on here that I can pull that in and I can start to do this little bit of faux watercoloring. So I'm just in circular motions, letting the tip of my blender pen touch the ink that I've stamped, and I'm drawing it out and spreading it around on the page. So I do particularly like this teacup for the fact that it has lots of small spaces. Um, I have seen some very talented blender pen users who can successfully use blender pens to color large spaces. I am not one of those people. Um, so I like the small space, circular motion, keep it simple. Um, you do not want to go over one spot too much because you will kind of pill the paper. Um, and that's also one of the reasons why I'm using shimmery white cardstock for this, because it's a little bit more resilient. Um, if you try to do this on basic white cardstock, um, if you're very talented, maybe you can handle it, but I am not. And I just end up with like a goopy mess on my paper as it kind of pills the paper. Um, so I really like the shimmery white for this because it doesn't do that quite as much. You still need to be careful not to go over one spot too much, but it's a bit more forgiving. Okay, so I always start in my little crevices and work my way out in that nice little circular motion. And we're almost done. And then you can very carefully, so that you, again, you don't peel it up, you can go back and pull some more color from certain spots if you want, just to make some areas a little bit darker. And now we are done our teacups. I'm gonna make sure that that tip is clean. And, oh, good morning. Yeah, I can't wait. All right. And then I'm gonna grab my mint macaron. I'm gonna give this a little squeeze to put some ink into the top. And this is the other way that you can use your blender pens. You can also use them with your watercolor pencils, actually. Um, lots of different ways, but I, I like this one. I'm gonna lift some ink from the lid. I don't want it too dark, so I'm gonna rub some of it off on the side. You can see how it started dark and faded. And then I'm going to use this to come in. I might have faded it too much. I'm going to come in and use this to color my leaves. Now, I am actively trying not to touch the edges of my leaves now because I don't want to pick up any of the blue. Luckily, because I am using a green, if it does pick it up, it will blend it in and mix the two together quite nicely. You might not be happy with the results if you were using a, a very different color. So like if you were using a red or a yellow, you might find that they do blend to make other colors. Um, whereas with the green and the blue, they're similar enough that if they blend a bit, it's all good. Okay. So there we go. We've got our leaves colored on our teacup. So we have this soft little watercolory teacup now. And then I'm going to clean my tip. So you just kind of rub it until the color's gone. 
Blues and greens are better. Um, reds tend to take some time to clear out. All right, so there's our sweet little watercolored teacup. And so just very, very subtle color. Now, if you have the dies, great. We're gonna go ahead and I'll just show you the dies. They're super cute. Um, so we've got like the little lemon wedge, all those little flowers we stamped can actually be cut out and popped up. Um, little tea bags, the outline to our lemon wedge, a bunch of little hearts, um, a different size little um, tea bag tag. You can cut out those greeneries that we stamped. Um, the fanciness of the teacup so you could do it in two different colors over like layer it and all we're going to do today is use the simplest one which is just the teacup cutout so if you don't have the dies you're still fine because this one's really easy to fussy cut just grab a pair of scissors cut around the edge and don't worry about the inside of the handle um so here we go we're going to pop this onto our stamp and cut and emboss machine and just so you know, the other die that I used, the stitch rectangle, actually would have fit on here. I just, um, I don't know why I didn't use it. I already have my other one set up on the other side of the room, and that's where I've left the die, so. <sighs> All right. So we've cut out our teacup. Here we go. And, oops. I love that, you know, if you are using the die, then it does cut out the handle. So that's kind of nice. So I'll put that off to the side, put that away. There we go. Now, this is where we have to make that decision I was asking you guys about before. So we can layer this all up. We're gonna put down this piece of designer series paper from that Rings of Love Celebration DSP, and it's cut at four by five and a quarter. And we can put this onto a lovely mint macaron background just like that and so it'll be soft and subtle and it's not going to stand out too much but you know it's there or we can make it pop just a little bit um, by putting this on an orchid oasis background now truth be told if it wasn't retired and i had any left i would be using misty moonlight because stamped off night of navy to me looks like misty moonlight why it was one of my favorite colors. So if you have any of that in your stash, I think that's what I would use. So what do you guys think? Here, I'll give you guys a bit of a closer view. So Orchid Oasis for a little shock of color or keep it very subtle, very soft and go with the Mint Macaron. I'll give you guys a minute while you guys are making that decision for me, I'm going to attach this teacup using some dimensionals. All right, so I'm going to pop one down at the base, two up at the top, and we're going to stick this down onto our piece here. So if I can get it, I want to make sure that all those greenery pieces are going to stay in my cup. So it looks like my cup's going to go off the bottom just a tiny bit. And that's okay. All right. And then... <laughs> okay, I've got two orchids and one mint macaron. I'll do the orchid because my sample actually uses the mint macaron and then you guys can see the two and if you're going to recreate this card for yourself you can decide which one you like the most. All right. So we're going to put this one onto the orchid. Um, and yeah, like I said, if you have any Misty Moonlight left in your stash, that's actually the color I would use. Because, um, yeah, it'll be a little bit softer. Because um, I definitely think the blue is very nice on this card. And you actually can also choose. I'm going to use the plaid side. But we also have, you know, a little bit more flowery background and everything and go with that. Um, I, you know, I agree, Maureen, my initial instinct was the mint macaron, which is why the sample card that I made earlier today um, uses the mint macaron. But here we go. So we're going to put this onto a mint macaron background, though that part a little bit subtle and then 
I think I'm actually going to pop this one up with dimensionals. Okay, here we go. Awesome. Now we'll pop that onto our card front. And then our final touch to this one is just to add a little embellishment. So I thought it would be nice to use our little butterflies because what butterfly could resist those little flowers? So I'm almost out of these, yikes. So we're just gonna throw a few onto this card and I might actually pop. Oh, come on. Come on, come on. Um, actually, maybe I'll put that guy down there. Well, actually, let's use them all up and then I'll just order a new pack. <laughs> okay, we'll put him right there. And oh, come on. These guys are a little bit finicky at times. Yeah, right there. So we've got a ton of butterflies on this card. I've been going more and more crazy with my embellishments. I used to just keep it simple, keep it to three. But I don't know. I'm loving the embellishments so much these days. I just can't stop using them. All right. So that is our finished card. So it's got a little bit of shimmer to it and a lot of cuteness. I love the watercolor look and using those blender pens makes it so easy, like no mess, no water needed, no hoping things don't run together um, and allows you to create just a really cute soft card. So I will bring in for you and show you the mint macaron version. Oh, and there we go. So with the blue or without, I actually, I think I do really like the blue, even though it's the orchid oasis and not the misty moonlight, I think that that works really really well so two super cute cards and then this one just reminded me it's a light enough inside to write on but it would be nice it's always nice to finish up our cards with a little bit of um, a white interior and maybe a little bit of stamping in there so i am actually going to glue in a piece of basic white cardstock cut at four by five and a quarter i just keep a stack of these because it's the perfect easy layer. Um, so we're going to glue one of those in. And then there is another bloom. So we have those ones that go perfectly across the grass, but there is another bloom in our set that, um, that we have available to us. And so I'm just going to grab my poppy parade again. And I'm going to stamp that off and add a few just to the inside of our card but I am gonna make sure to stamp them off so that they stay soft and subtle inside our card. And then we can do that to our envelope as well so that we don't have a naked envelope. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. Yeah, I really, um, when I saw the teacups, I thought they were super duper cute. Um, and so I'm really glad I have them and really like how they coordinate so nicely with that Rings of Love designer series paper. So like I said, you can grab that paper for free when you pick up the cup of tea bundle or any other order that equals um, $60 Canadian before shipping and taxes. So thanks so much for joining me today. I will be live again tomorrow morning. Tomorrow's Friday. Oh, but I won't be on at the same time tomorrow. Um, I am a little bit spoiled. I asked Noah to help with the house cleaning, so he hired cleaners. <laughs> <laughs> so they're going to be here tomorrow at nine. So sometime in the afternoon when we get home, we're going to go out for the morning. Um, when we get home, I will be live with my next um, summer celebration series. So I'm sorry, I won't be on um, right at nine. I will try to remember to post something in the morning, letting you guys know what time I will be on. But I will be live tomorrow with another card for featuring our celebration items because they're just so beautiful. Um, yeah, so have a wonderful day. It's super, super rainy here. Janice, I think I'm going to have to swim or paddleboard to your house. Um, it's gross outside. Um, 
So looking forward to seeing you. And um, yeah, see you tomorrow. Bye, everyone.